Hey friends, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast with your host, Nicole and Hannah. Come join us for some hopeful conversations about heartfelt entertainment that makes your heart swing. Hey Festivals, we are back with another episode and today we will be recapping to the altar. Hannah couldn't make it today, but we have a very special guest and friend on the podcast, Lydia. Welcome to the podcast, Lydia. Hi, I'm so glad to finally be on the podcast. I've been listening for a while now, so it's really cool to be actually be on it. Yes, we're excited to have you. So before we start with our recap, Lydia, how long have you been a postable and when did you start watching Signs of Delivered? Well, actually, I'm probably, I'm not the oldest postable out there, probably. But I feel like I've been one of the older ones because I started watching in either 2013 or 2014. I started watching Science Field Delivered when the TV series was actually still airing. Um, My grandma introduced it to me. The first episode I ever watched was The Treasure Box, which is such an emotional episode to start watching with. But it really was the thing that got me hooked onto the series. And eventually uh, I showed my mom. And then Ever since then, been watching Science Still Delivered, enjoying all the stories and just enjoying the whole environment of the Postables. (laughs) That's an amazing story. And we're so glad that you're part of the Postables family. Yeah, I'm glad too. (laughs) Before we get started on our recap, we are recording on Eric's birthday today. So happy birthday, Eric. Happy birthday, Eric. Yay. (laughs) To the Altar, it premiered on July 15th, 2018. It guest stars Janet Kidder as Annalise, Jessica Sipos as Jessica, Alan Gray as Mr. Fry, and Gregory is back as Papa O'Toole, Zach is back as Ramon, Jill as Hazel, Barry Bostwick as Bill Haywood, Carol Burnett as Artis Parker Pennington. Pain and Kevmo as Gabe. The long awaited wedding of Norman and Rita leads the postables to a letter for a young woman with clues about her missing mother. What do you think about the synopsis, Lydia? I think it's such a cool thing to have. I think finally having a mother and daughter story in postable history, I guess, <laughs> in their yeah. stories, yeah. at least. And I feel like there's there's a sign to delivered movie for every moment, mm-hmm. an episode for every moment. And I think that it's really important that they had a mother and daughter story in Science to delivered. I think so too. It is a great movie, especially with Mother's Day coming up. Yeah, exactly. Do we want to get started with the letter story? Yes. The opening of the movie has a monologue by Oliver. Delivered brilliantly by Eric Mavius. He says, imagine something precious, a priceless gift you've been waiting all your life to give to the one you love. You wait for the right time, you wrap it carefully, and you pack it in a box, and you place a few stamps on the outside and hand this wonderful thing over to a complete stranger. Absolutely confident that your irreplaceable gift will find its way to the one you love. That is the miracle of a postage stamp. The stamp is the smallest contract in the world. A promise that if you believe in it, we will deliver it somehow, some way, because we know if that contract is broken, hearts can be broken too. I think that that is such a beautiful monologue to start this movie, especially when it has so many different themes going in at the same time with Rita and Norma's wedding approaching and also just the story of this box slash letter that finally finds its way to be delivered at the right time. I agree. And a little bit of that monologue reminds me of the opening monologue from Eric as Oliver in The Vows We Have Made. And just for a little refresher, I know that we mentioned this on our recap of The Vows We Have Made, but I'll mention it again. The last sentence of the monologue from The Vows We Have Made reads, What is written on our hearts can never truly be lost and will somehow, some way, someday be delivered. That's just really sweet. 
Yes. I think these past two movies that they have made, I think they kind of mirror each other in a way. They're kind of like sister sibling movies, kind of, I would feel like, where they're similar, but so different. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. We get to Shane and Oliver in the DLO, and we'll talk a little bit more about this scene with them later, but Shane found a letter in one of the pockets of the wedding dress that she found. The letter was written from a mother to her daughter. And, you know, they read the letter. I thought that letter was really beautiful. I think it's a really sweet letter. It says a lot of things, like, in between the lines as well. I yeah. feel like, I mean, as, as we get later on into the letter story, I think mm-hmm. we understand more and more of what that letter actually means. Yeah. Um, the box it was delivered in, the stamps on the outside of the box that it was delivered in. Yeah. Um, a lot of interesting things tying in the story. Yeah. I love how she addressed it at the end. She says, love forever, mommy. Yeah. And I think it really shows how much this dress is kind of a symbol of their relationship in a way, as in this, this needs to get delivered to her daughter because it's kind of, again, it's a symbol of their relationship. Like, and later on we learn, of course, like the dress doesn't really matter as much as the relationship but it's it's just a piece of that relationship yeah I agree I also love after they read the letter and Shane is talking about the dress you know she has the check in her hand and before she rips it up she's like who needs another tablecloth I think that is so funny yes I think the idea of repurposing the dress for a tablecloth is just like so hilarious like who would do that you know who would who in their right mind would buy a wedding dress and make it into tablecloth? I can see like changing it into a different type of dress, but yeah. like a tablecloth? What? Yeah. <laughs> I loved the part where they're saying, oh, we tried everything except try it on because that's yeah. how she finds the note. And I think that's so interesting. I don't know. Because like yeah. other things like, oh, it's in this. Oh, the note's in this, you know. Yeah. You wouldn't really try on someone else's mail, but at the same time, it was the thing that needed to happen. <laughs> yeah. We get a scene with Norman and Oliver in the lab and Shane and Rita in the DLO. You know, they're doing their own thing. Norman and Oliver, they're looking at the box that the wedding dress was in and Shane and Rita are looking at the wedding dress. Norman recognizes the box the dress was in because it got caught in a conveyor belt accident at the terminal annex and he recognizes the box because of all of the stamps there is one of Bessie Coleman Sacagawea Amelia Earhart Nellie Bly and I think later on in the movie Clara Moss is mentioned as well yep which is really awesome yeah and I think again it goes in with the story especially later on, like these are famous, courageous women. I think they mentioned that all of them were American women who like helped change the world in a way. Yeah. And I think that's such a cool thing too, is there's just so many different designs of postal stamps. And yet like those are the ones that she specifically chose to put on the box is really. Yeah. I love that. With the mother talking about danger, adventure, and fighting the good fight in her letter to her daughter, Shane and Rita believe that she could be a soldier or a spy. I love Shane's line. She says, an international woman of mystery. She sounds like Norman's grandmother. (laughs) Yes, and I would agree that Norman's grandmother would probably fit into that category, you know? Yeah. Her off doing her thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that Carol Burnett was back for this movie as well. Yeah, I think that was really special. Yeah. There are initials ER sewn into the dress. Evelyn Rose. She is Denver's most elegant wedding designer. She sews her initials into every dress she makes. No two dresses are the same because every bride is unique and every gown has a secret. And that is her motto. Yeah, I think that's really cool too. I think to bring in the seamstress element of designing wedding dresses and then the story of Evelyn Rose in this, the character at least, of Mm -hmm. making each dress unique for each bride. And I think that that's really like a cool testament 
And I think it, again, it makes the handing down of the dress from like mother to daughter, like just so much more special because, you know, Jessica's grandmother was the original one with the dress and then handing that down to her mother and then eventually to her that'd be such a special thing to share just the individuality of the dress I think that'd be really cool yeah I agree the postables they started talking about tea houses in Denver and Rita mentions that the Brown Palace Hotel is the only place in Denver that serves their own 1892 Darjeeling private blend. Yeah, and Darjeeling tea, I'm actually just trying it today. And it's very, it is a black tea. I mean, you think of like English breakfast tea that I would consider to be like the most standard black tea out there, um, along with Earl Grey tea. Darjeeling is just a little more elevated. In fact, on the box, when I tried it, it said Darjeeling tea is like the champagne of black teas. And oh, wow. So when you say that, like, it's, a, it's like an 1892 blend of a tea, it's almost like wine that kind of like, you know, sits and it becomes more priceless. Like, you know, yeah. it's so expensive as it sits there. So I think it fits in that same category of like, this is a very like expensive tea to have yeah I think it means more to the story too of when Annalise takes her daughter there it's like it's a special occasion but it also was like very important moments of their life because of them not seeing each other as often and then that was where they got to see each other and have like this really nice expensive like treat of beautiful tasting tea you know yeah I love the next scene when Shane and Oliver are at the Brown Palace having tea and they meet with Mr. Fry for the first time. And Mr. Fry comes over to the table and I think he starts pouring the tea and he says one lump or two and Shane says three. I definitely think Shane is a coffee drinker. And so I know personally like coffee and tea are just totally different. Yeah. You can have coffee black and you'd have to have like a ton of sugar and tea. And there's people who have like tea with no sugar in it. And then whenever they have to have coffee, they have to have like multiple teaspoons of sugar. They are totally different. So I completely understand when she said three lumps of sugar in her tea. That's me. Yeah. Not tea, but when I have coffee, I have to have almond milk or some kind of Right. And I think that's due to the acidic nature of both tea and coffee. They both have a little bit of acidity to them. So if you're not used to tea or coffee, definitely try some cream, try some sugar. Yeah. You will eventually warm up to it. (laughs) Yeah. I always put some kind of creamer in my coffee. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Mr. Fry has worked at the Brown Palace for many years. He served kings, queens, presidents, authors, explorers, captains of industry and the occasional prince the flags in the lobby honor all the countries in the world in which the guests are from I love when Oliver is talking about the Darjeeling tea he says this is marvelous and then Mr. (laughs) Fry says something and then Oliver says do I detect a hit of musk with a floral top note you do indeed sir I think that goes to show like I feel like Oliver and Shane are very like opposite, but they're almost like a yin yang kind of thing where they like, they go together perfectly because of their differences. And I think that's, it's so funny that Oliver would be the one like, oh, is this in the tea? And Shane was over there having three teaspoons of sugar in her tea. And that probably masks some of the flavor, but yeah, completely different. Yeah. But also, I feel like it's something that I would do. Like, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I te- detect all those same tea because I have tea like every day. So, you know, <laughs> I would probably yeah. say, oh, yeah, this tastes different in this way. <laughs> yeah. I think that's funny. <laughs> yes. Rita meeting with Evelyn Rose. Evelyn recognizes the lace of the wedding dress. She bought it in Belgium in the 1960s, but she doesn't know who she made it for until they find the prayer 
inside the wedding dress. Yeah, it's. I think it's really interesting that she has like a secret little area where she can sew it in and she knows where on the dress is I'm sure it's probably like in the same place for every dress so that she knows where it is yeah but it's really interesting like just to seam rip open a dress and yeah look there's a no and I like there was like a I think she said something about like prayers being sewn into every dress like these are Mm -hmm. prayers for the bride the bride yeah and that's such a cool way of thinking of it too because obviously the brides don't know they're there which is really interesting, but like she knows that the prayers have been sewn in this dress, which makes it even, I think, more special when you wear it. Like even if you, you're you not knowing that the prayer is there, but the dressmaker knows that the prayer is there. So when they walk down the aisle, like the bride, like there's a prayer with them, which is a really cool like idea. I love that too. Rita and Norman's conversation in the DLO about the stamps. Norman tells her about all the women on the stamps, like he and Oliver were talking Mm -hmm. about earlier. Nellie Bly broke the world record for traveling around the world, and Clara Moss, she sacrificed her life trying to find a cure for yellow fever. Like we mentioned earlier, they are all American women who helped change the world, and they believe that whoever mailed the dress and the letter identifies with all the women on the stamps. Yeah, I think the stamps play such a heavy role into this story. I mm-hmm. think more than any of the other episodes. Like, yeah. I think the stamps in this episode help tell a story of what's going on. Yeah. With the mother and the daughter and their relationship. Yeah. So it's really cool to finally see like stamps be part of mm-hmm. the whole puzzle piece for the letter. Yeah. The paper used for the letter is formal stationery in good quality, but the top has been cut off, which makes it seem like the person they're looking for doesn't want to be found because usually formal stationery has, you know, a business name or an address. Yeah, I think that's true because again, we find out later that she doesn't want to be found. I think they were right in saying that. Yeah, she doesn't want to be found, but they they didn't know how close or far away she was due to that yeah the postables in the DLO looking at the wedding dress so this is after they had been at the farm and Shane and Rita were talking to Bill about Sonny's wedding dress and how she you know had to keep taking it in and altering it and Shane remembered what was in the letter from the mother about how she had to have her wedding dress taken out. So they go back to the DLO and I love Norman's line referring to the small scissors Shane needs (laughs) to, you know, cut into the dress to find the prayer. He says, little bitty or itty bitty. And Shane's like, Norman. Oh, that's such a funny scene. Yes. The prayer that they found sewn into the dress was for a woman named Annalise. Yeah. So now we know the name. Yeah. And I think that's really cool because again, she signed it mommy. So mm-hmm. then you don't know the n- name of the woman who sent it. Yeah. So we finally have like one clue to who this person is that sent yeah. it. I love the next scene when the postables are at the Brown Palace meeting with Mr. Fry and he believes that he knows Annalise because for many years he served a mother and daughter and he mentions that Annalise would tell her daughter these enthralling tales of bravery and danger and expedition. I also love the flashbacks we get in that scene. I think it's really cool that like it it impressed upon even the workers like oh yeah. this is a mother and daughter who come for tea and yeah. the mother goes and tells stories and the daughter's enthralled by them even writing them down. I think yeah. that'd be really interesting to see like oh all these other people you know have like really fancy tea so there might be richer people there who are just sitting and then there's this mother and her daughter and they're having tea and they're having so much fun together yeah the stories were always different but always heroic and always told as though the mother herself was the heroine and the heroine's name was Annalise I think it's really cool I know a lot of parents will tell their stories like 
tell stories to their children, like bedtime yeah. stories. And mm-hmm. of course, those are all imaginative. But um, as we learned, Jessica thought they were real for a short time in her life. And yeah. then she realized they're probably not, but they're mm-hmm. still special. Those yeah. stories are still special. Yeah. And we finally hear that the daughter's name is Jessica in this scene. Yes. Because, you know, Rita puts the pieces together. Right. And it's really cool because then they all run over to the bookstore and they're like, look, it's her, you know, she wrote the stories and they're all about Annalise, which is her mother, which is really special. Like all those years of her writing about her mother's stories Mm -hmm. and it's such an important part of her life and who she became as a writer was in part due to her mother and her telling of stories which is a really special thing to share even if she might not know where her mother is it's really it's a really beautiful thing yeah I totally agree I also love in the scene when they're outside the bookstore Norman says I've never heard of Jessica Gordon and Shane says probably because you're not a teenage girl (laughs) That is such a Norman question to ask. Yes. Like, why haven't I heard? Well, Norman, I'm sorry. You're not a teenage girl. You you wouldn't be in, like I'm super absorbed into that world, you know? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's so funny. They were very brief, but I thought the small interactions with Shane and Oliver and Rita and Norman, you know, before they went their separate ways were really sweet. Yeah. Shane gets a phone call right before it cuts to the next scene. And the last thing we hear her say is, but where are you? Did you know immediately that she was? I knew exactly because at an earlier scene in the Brown Palace Hotel, she asked for the records, like the forwarding addresses of artists, which is Norman's grandmother. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of already knew that that was coming. I'm like, yep. Okay. She's she's on a mission, which is really sweet of Shane to like find out where artist is but I love how it's kind of kept a secret if you're not paying close enough attention it's really cool yeah I immediately knew as well yeah I mean who else would she be talking to I don't know I don't know (laughs) the postables meet with Jessica and she has a book signing and they give her the wedding dress which was a really sweet moment I love when Shane gives Jessica the wedding dress you know she says mommy because she knows right away it's from her mother yeah I think that's really cool too and in the span of the movie like this is happening like right towards the middle of the movie which you know usually they don't deliver letters until later it seems like but there's just so much more to the story than just delivering the dress Mm -hmm. which I think is really important too to know that like it's not just the letter it's the people behind the letters that are just as important Yeah. Jessica starts talking about her mother and we get another flashback of her telling another story, I believe, which was a sweet moment. And then Jessica goes on to say that her mother would leave her with her grandmother for a week, even a month while she disappeared on these secret missions. But she'd always come back with her mission accomplished and another story to tell. This next flashback makes me cry because it's the moment that Annalise tells Jessica that she had to go on her greatest, most dangerous mission of her life. Yeah. And I think as a child hearing that, I think that'd be really hard to understand like, why, why are you leaving? But yeah, I think it'd be really hard both for mother and daughter, even if you're not giving the specifics of what you're doing, what you're going through. Yeah. The next line from Jessica after the second flashback makes me cry as well. She says, the day I turned 21, I looked at myself in the mirror and said, just face it, she dumped you. Hmm. And I think that's hard. Again, I think even as an adult, yeah, realizing that your mother is gone. She's probably not coming back. You got to yeah. like move on with life, mm-hmm. which would be really hard to do. Yeah. I thought it was really sweet how Norman encouraged her. You know, he said, you don't really believe that, do you? And then he started talking about all the stamps. And I think that kind of plays into both Norman and Rita's stories at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, Norman's story of where he was, you know, a foster kid and then he finally finds his grandma later on yeah. so I think he's believing that 
no, this isn't the end. You're going to find each other again one day. Um, Yeah. Jessica was married five months ago, so she was not able to wear the dress, but you know, Jessica says that it's all right. I didn't miss the dress. I missed her. Yeah. And I think that plays more into the story too, is like, we're like, oh, this dress, we got to get it to the person so that she can wear it on her wedding day. Yeah. But um, realizing that that's, that's it. the dress isn't, although the dress is part of the story, it's not the main object of the story. It's not the driving force of what actually needs to happen. Yeah. It's just something along the way that helps them. Yeah. This next scene with Shane and Oliver in the DLO after Shane offered to find Annalise for Jessica. Why are you doing that? (laughs) I think that's funny because I feel like Shane has always been the person who has been more emotionally attached to the people in the letters. And she always wants to have a happy ending. I think we even see that from like pilot movie where he's like no we have to do this in a certain way and we have yeah. to you know get it but Shane has always been the one to push the envelope so to say to help other people which I think really shows to her empathy and who she is as a character trying to help other people I think that's really cool yeah I agree Oliver's line to what corner of the earth might we have to go to find her I have a theory oh happy day <laughs> Ah, yeah. Call back to the pilot. Yes. I think that's what's so cool about Science of Delivered. At least all the movies. They're like so intertwined with each other. There's always a common thread running through them all. Even though the stories are so different, they're they're all still together. Yeah. We get another scene with Shane and Oliver in the DLO. They are talking about the women on the stamps. Nellie Bly was not only a world-renowned traveler, she was an investigative reporter most famous for posing as a mental patient in 1867 to expose disturbing conditions in New York's Blackwell's Island Asylum, resulting in major reforms in the treatment of mental health. Jane believes that Annalise might be an undercover human rights activist. I think that's a really interesting thought, too, and I think Again, we'll, we find out eventually what those stamps mean to, mm-hmm. her, to yeah. uh, Annalise's story. But yeah, there's so many stories behind the stamps too. It's, there's just so many stories going on in this episode. It's like trying to figure out which one's the right one. Yeah. Which one's like, you know, the one, uh, again, what, what's the clue that leads us to Annalise? Yeah. This next scene is really brief, but they are at the bachelor party. And there's a little clip of Shane and Oliver talking about Annalise. And she says, it was the flags in the lobby of all the places that artists had traveled to. And she thinks that maybe Annalise had left a forwarding address the last time she had been in Denver. She had left the number of her travel agent who had the number for her private pilot that had just flown her to, but we don't hear where. Because Oliver interrupts her with his comment, shrimp sauce, it is everywhere. (laughs) Oh, and of course, Oliver's thinking one thing and Shane's thinking like, oh, here's this really important clue. And here Oliver interrupts like shrimp sauce (laughs) everywhere. (laughs) Oh my goodness. When we get later to talk about Shane and Oliver, I think it's, again, of what's going on in that part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on in his mind. He has a lot on his mind. Yeah. The Pistables have a conversation with Artis, and Artis was giving Rita and Norman the number for her accountant, Harry, and they go to write the number down on a piece of the stationery from the Brown Palace, and they put the pieces together that it is the same paper Annalise used. I think that's really cool too. Is like, oh, this is, it's kind of like been under our noses the whole time where Mm -hmm. she is, but we didn't discover it until the right moment. Yeah. We're talking with artists, which is really cool. Yeah. I also love artists' comment when Norman smells the paper and she (laughs) says, nobody smells like my Norman. That scene is so funny. She's like, oh, no one smells like mine. I mean, Norman and artists, although they're different, they're very much alike. And it's hilarious. Yes, Carol Burnett plays the role of artists. 
perfectly. Yeah. If we have any more movies, fingers crossed, we need to see artists again. Yeah. I think she's such an important part of the story. Yeah. I, you know what would be fun is if artists would come in like a new movie and, you know, they like adopted Charlie. Yeah. Charlie and, and Eleanor. Her, yeah. Which is really cool. I think that would be <laughs> funny, like artists meeting all of them yes. together. I yeah. think that'd be funny. Yeah. Shane and Rita go to the Brown Palace and they meet Annalise. She works at the Brown Palace. She tells Shane and Rita that she is protecting Jessica from herself. She yeah. also mentions that she has been having hallucinations since Jessica was eight, I believe, which is really sad. Yeah. And I like the one quote that she actually said. She was like, protecting her not from tigers or monsters, but me. I think that's really sad because if it was tigers or monsters, it might be more, I don't know, palatable for a kid. Like, oh yeah, I understand yeah. because you're fighting something that's tangible, that's real life. Yeah. But instead it's something that's going on inside her head, which is really sad that it's yeah. happened. And mm -hmm. I, th I think this episode takes an interesting look at mental health of people and shows a different side to mental health of people who maybe haven't gotten the help that they've needed for so long. And also, again, later on when they go back to tell Jessica where her mother is, yeah, she's upset about it. She said it would have been almost like it would have been better if she was like a secret spot you know fighting things yeah. because I think mental health is such a hard thing to talk about and it's also a hard thing to like understand what somebody else is going through which I think they touched on mental health really well in this episode I think it was written really well without being too lighthearted about it but like still having the deep meaningfulness of it without being too much and yeah. without it making it be like oh mental health really isn't anything but they did the right amount of it yeah it was really sad hearing about that and I think it was it was something that we didn't expect when, especially when I first saw this movie it wasn't something yeah. that I expected them to do in a science field deliver movie mm -hmm. but it was done really well I totally agree yes Annalise made friends with some of their regulars and had them send the letters from wherever they were off to next. And the wedding dress was sent from Hawaii, which I thought was pretty cool. I think it's so cool that she was able to get people to send them from different places. Yeah. I like if some random stranger came up to me and said, hey, can you send this from wherever you're going? I'm like, I'd be like a little be like, what are you talking about? Why would you? But it's really cool that she must have had a, enough of a relationship with some of these people to be able to send yeah. things mm -hmm. from all over the world. Yeah. Annalise was at the wedding. She watched from the kitchen. I think it's cool that she was there the whole time, but it's also really sad because yeah. like she got to see her daughter, but her daughter didn't know that she was there at her wedding. I think that'd be really hard to like know like oh she was there but she didn't she wasn't strong enough to like come forward and say like oh yeah I was here you know mm -hmm. but yeah um. the last lines from Annalise and Shane and Rita in the scene always bring me to tears Annalise says I want Jessie to remember her mother as someone who was strong and brave and did things that mattered like the women on those stamps Rita says, but you are strong and so brave. You faced a terrible darkness and you had the courage to ask for help. Then Shane says, if you think you haven't made a difference in the world, think about the thousands of children who were inspired to choose the more honorable, the kinder, the higher ground because they read Jessica's books. And those books began with you and the stories you told her. And then Rita says, you've been on Never Lost Island for an awfully long time. Yeah, I think the concept that they're kind of touching on is like, you don't know how much you mean to other people. 
I think yeah. sometimes we can make our thoughts think too much about, well, I'm not doing what other people are doing. So that's not important, but you, yeah. you really don't know how important you are to other people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really good thing to remember is like, we think so much about ourselves that we don't really see like, oh, how much other people may need you, how much you really matter to other people. Yeah. yeah. I also love the callback to higher ground with yeah. yeah, the higher ground. This next scene with Shane and Rita meeting Jessica always makes me cry my eyes out every time. It's such a sad scene, but it's also such a good reminder to all of us. Yeah, I actually have Rita's speech written down. Jessica says, maybe it's too late. Rita says, no, no, because I know what too late feels like. I'm getting married tomorrow, but my mom won't be there because I lost her this year. She didn't have to overcome the same challenges as your mom, but she was passionate like her. And she dreamed of making the world a better place the same way that your mother wanted to. Sometimes she did crazy things and she took chances that I just, I just didn't understand. But I always assumed that I would be able to talk to her about it when I was ready. Except now, now it's too late. It's too late for answers. It's too late to ask her for help with my wedding. It's too late to thank her for all those wonderful things that she taught me. It's too late for me to just sit down and laugh with her over a cup of tea. If I could do just just one of those things today, I wouldn't waste a second thinking about the time that we lost. She's your mother. She loves you more than anything in the world. And she did her best. What other answers do you need? Yeah, that is such a powerful thing to say too. And this episode touches on so many things like mother-daughter relationships, mental mm-hmm. health, but it also touches on grief a little bit here in yeah. where she's still grieving her mother. And I think that's part of something that she'll always have. I think whenever you lose a loved one, you, no matter what, you'll still always think of them. You'll still always be wanting them back. Um, yeah. But Rita really helps Jessica here in saying that it's not too late because life is way too short for you to just be like, oh, we can't get back what we had because no, you still can while she's yeah. still here. You still have that opportunity. You yeah. should you should take it because you never know. Yeah. And we definitely need to give a round of applause to Crystal in that scene. She knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I think it's one of Rita's most, most powerful moments of the story of Science of the Liberty. Like it must have been such a hard scene to just film in general but also be like so emotionally vulnerable like that too I think that would be really hard to do yes it would the last scene we get with the letter story is the postables at the brown palace with Annalise and seeing her reunite with Jessica I love Annalise's line she says I never knew that strangers could be so kind and Rita says we're not strangers anymore and then Norman (laughs) says we're the postables (laughs) Uh, yes and I think that's that's really cool because I feel like they do create meaningful friendship like even if it's just acquaintances with every single person they deliver a letter to with every single person who they come in contact with the possibles are very special they definitely are of course the reunion between Jessica and Annalise is just beautiful yeah and she's there sitting wearing the dress I think whenever I saw that moment for the first time I think was like I mean we were already crying because of everything else but that scene where she's sitting there wearing the dress because we know how much it meant to her Mm -hmm. mother that she would wear it yeah that's really sweet yeah another tear-jerking moment in this movie yeah and this movie has a lot yes do we want to get into Shane and Oliver and Joe now yes So the very first scene right out of the gate after the opening monologue is Shane clocking in for work and she sees Oliver, the looks between them, like the look Oliver gives her smolder. It's so funny because I feel like this whole movie touches, uh, at least between Shane and Oliver, it's it's so funny because again, it's going to be about Rita and Norman's wedding 
and like how they're in quotation marks I have contemplative is what yeah. uh, Oliver tells Shane like it makes you think about things uh-huh. but I also found this like kind of a mirroring thing where throughout the whole movie Oliver doesn't tell Shane I love you until the end mm-hmm. and it made me remember of what Shane was I think saying to Oliver one time about Rita and Norman where it's like how many ways do you try to say I love you without actually saying I love you that was in a hope in a future so the episode yeah and I think it's like an interesting mirror of that where it's like now Rita and Norman are the ones who are getting married but like Shane and Oliver are in this other like awkward place where like they already know that they love each other but they're just not gonna they're not saying it at the moment you know yeah the conversation at the terminal annex about the bachelor party in the box that she found for the unclaimed items auction. You know, she walks up to Oliver and Oliver says, in case you're wondering, I have Thursday under control. You forgot. Let's just say Norman's surprise bachelor party will be a bit of a surprise to everyone. (laughs) This is very unlike you, Oliver. I know. I just think the wedding has us all a bit distracted contemplative yeah well why don't you contemplate asking someone to help you I am certainly capable of handling and it it shows Oliver's mindset during this whole thing is he is very distracted like he is not thinking at all he's I mean he's thinking about something else so that brain space isn't being used for like the stuff that Oliver would normally be on top of he yeah. would be he would be like oh we're on schedule here we're doing this but yeah. no it's completely gone out the window but it was marked on the calendar which makes me think like he hasn't marked he's just not looking at his calendar that's yeah. not what's on his mind yeah Shane is on his mind yes also the next part of this scene is really cute it's probably one of my favorite scenes in the canon they start talking about the dress and I think he says something about why is it going in the opposite direction of the auction and then Shane starts talking about buying the dress and then Oliver says Miss McInerney I cannot bend the rules simply because you and I are and Shane says are especially because you and I are and that's from Oliver and then Shane you know gets right up to his ear and she says I love it when you get on Miss McInerney yeah, when he's especially flustered, he calls her Miss McInerney instead of Shane at this um, point, which is really funny. Yes, it's really it's like I love uh, how she bats her eyes at him. That is so cute. Uh, and then Oliver says, I'm late for the parking meeting. And then Shane says, have fun. Oh, and remember our diagonal. Which is a callback to another episode when I think it's like the beginning of the series where they like, oh, there's a meeting on the parking lots and like, Oh, they're, oh, it's anarchy because they're trying to paint a horizontal instead of diagonal or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is another callback, which I found so funny. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This is another callback. There's so many callbacks in this movie. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yes. Shane in the DLO. Oliver sees her in the wedding dress. The buttoning <laughs> of the dress. Swoon. <laughs> And what's so funny is I don't think she realizes he's there until all of a sudden someone's butting up the back of the dress and she's like, <gasps> you know, kind of a thing. And it's like her mind was in a completely different place. And it's like, yeah. well, you weren't meant to see me in this because I was just trying it on kind of a thing. And Yeah, I thought it was really sweet. The first time I saw this scene, and of course, every time I watch this movie, I literally gasp when we it's, see Oliver behind her. It's also just like such a beautiful dress. It is. And okay. Because of course the letters in the pocket, it has pockets. So it's like the perfect wedding dress. If yeah. You think about it. Yes. It's a very romantic scene. Yeah. Yep. Very sweet. I love how Shane says, I was just, and then Oliver says, contemplating. I just thought that the material was so nice. I could alter it and make it a cocktail gown or use the train to make a, I don't know, make a, a shawl, a tablecloth. I just hate to see something so beautiful end up on an auction block. Yeah. And I think, I think that's really sweet too, because she's like, it's just so pretty. I just can't, 
yeah not do anything about it you know I have to take it I have to find a loving home for it you know yeah yeah Shane and Oliver at the Brown Palace talking about the bachelor party and they're talking about the food that they're eating while having tea and he (laughs) says do you think it's too late to ask them to cater Thursday night and of course Oliver's idea of a bachelor party is not the traditional view of a bachelor party like oh yes little tea sandwiches and tea that would be the perfect and Shane's like no we have yeah. you have wings and beer you're drinking out yeah. like a, a solo cup you know what I mean like, I have it written down she says what are you talking about Oliver it's a bachelor party it's a bunch of guys drinking beer and eating Cheetos out of the bag they don't want finger sandwiches they want hot wings and ribs and red plastic cups hot wings does that involve sauces because I just had the carbons professional <laughs> oh for heaven's sakes uh what are you doing I'm texting your father to tell him that his son is hopelessly lost somewhere in the 20th century <laughs> and could he meet us at your house for an intervention <laughs> which I find so funny because Oliver is very old-fashioned but Joe is not he's he's right with the times you know he knows yeah. what um, people you know would like it's so funny oh Oliver has no clue I love that scene though it is so the the comedy in that scene is perfect and they nail it I know it's perfect it's so funny (laughs) Shane and Oliver walking through the brown palace and they're talking about Rita and Norman and Shane mentions that she's not saying it has to be this big crazy blowout but Norman needs a chance to let off some steam kick up his heels a little and celebrate the fact that he's found the love of his life. He has, hasn't he? Not everyone can say that. I meant, uh, I admire his perseverance. (laughs) I didn't mean to suggest that you, I mean that. Yeah, there's a lot of really funny, awkward moments between the two because, again, we're skirting around the idea of, like, saying I love you without actually saying I love you, Um, which we we all know where it ends up eventually at the end of the episode. But it's really funny throughout the whole episode, just, like, maneuvering our way like oh yeah Yeah. we can't talk about that but yet we're still talking about certain things when Oliver says I didn't mean to suggest that you and then you know he stops I feel like the rest of that sentence in my mind would be that you aren't the love of my life if that makes sense well and there's so many hints in this movie well that you could come to the conclusion that Oliver wants to break up with Shane because the part after the bachelor party yeah anyway, they were talking about they it, were yeah. talking about like oh well you know that like it, it was something along the lines of like you're not meant to be together then like you know but it wasn't it was worded in a way that could make you think that oh they're gonna break up I also the last part of that scene when they're walking through the brown palace when Shane says that Oliver was never supposed to see her in the wedding dress. Can you just forget that happened? I wrote in my notes, not a chance. Oliver is never going to forget. I know. And especially when he was already in this contemplative mood. Yeah. You know, where he's just thinking about things and then seeing Shane in the dress just kind of escalates things. Uh-huh. Just, yeah. Like, yeah, not a chance. No, nope, nope. he's not going to forget. Nope, never going to forget. Shane, Oliver, and Joe at Oliver's house, and they're talking about the bachelor party and the chocolate fondue fountain and the craft beer station. This line from Oliver, he says, and since Norman's cousin Vernon is making the wedding cake, I thought he might throw in some specialty pastries as well. Shane says, Vernon plays the spoons, so maybe we could have a little after dinner musicale too. Really? No, no, Oliver, would you please just let your father handle this? Uh, again, it's the way that they both think is so different. And Oliver's like, oh, yeah, we can do this. Like, no, Oliver, what are you thinking? Why? <laughs> the green tie story. I love the green tie. Uh, oh, I love the green that tie is story. such a funny thing. And I think once they mentioned it, like, you kind of knew where the episode was going in some way. She's like, why would you mention this all of a sudden? Like out of nowhere, oh yeah, green tie, how the tools propose, you know, just yeah. kind of out of the blue. And then I found it really interesting. Like we'll get to that a little bit later, but yeah, the whole green tie story is hilarious. I love it. It's really cute. Yeah. 
Oliver Randall Bart- O'Toole. <laughs> yes, Randall Bartlett O'Toole. Yes. And Letitia Heppelwhite. Oliver has never had a wedding or been to a bachelor party, so it is all making sense now why he brought up the comment about the food at the bachelor party. Well, yeah, he's just not that type of guy. He's a guy who loves Shakespeare and really cares about the written word. You know what I yes. mean? He, and he's also like a super spiritual person too yeah. of like he always has the right thing to say at the moment. He trusts in mm-hmm. the timing, which is obviously a very Christian concept yeah. and everything. Yeah. Um, of course, he's not going to know a single thing about how to pulling in a bachelor party yes but that's all right we still love oliver anyway you know what though personally oliver's bachelor party sounds great i would be down yeah with a little tea sandwiches yes tea i could do oliver's party. this is like a tea party he's planning a tea party i would go to oliver's bachelor party yeah it'd be fun you'd be like yeah tea party <laughs> yeah Joe wore an ugly green tie when he proposed, but Oliver didn't do the same because Holly proposed to him and three hours later they were married at City Hall. So he never had a wedding, which I already mentioned. Yeah, and I think that really explains also about Holly and Oliver's relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like Holly was definitely the one, not controlling, but kind of in control of the relationship. I feel like she's the one to propose and they got married really quickly after yeah like very whirlwind romancy kind of thing and for Oliver the way he is like I don't know if he would be like I don't know so I don't really care kind of a thing I don't know yeah we talked a little bit about this scene earlier in regards to the letter story but Shane and Oliver they are in the DLO and Oliver is telling Shane how she hasn't been able to find anything with Annalise and Shane says are you okay Oliver says I'm fine I just have a lot of things on my mind and then Shane says to Oliver something along the lines of how she'll work on things with Annalise and he should get ready for the bachelor party and then Oliver says I am sorry I seem to be somewhere else these days and then Shane says well wherever that is don't stay there too long a really cute scene yeah and I think it's like letting them know like yeah you can have this time to think about things but just don't dwell on something too long you know what I mean yeah I don't I don't know if she, I, she obviously doesn't really know what he's dwelling on but he is thinking about something so she's letting him know yeah I understand that you're dwelling on this just don't yeah. don't take too long <laughs> yes she's I love how patient she is with Oliver it's she her- really is yeah That scene also reminds me a little bit of the marriage rehearsal scene in Vows. Yeah. Just like her patience and her compassion for Oliver. Yeah, exactly. The bachelor party and Oliver and Joe's conversation about Shane. And also in that scene, we see a little clip of Shane and Rita talking, which I thought was really cute. Yeah. You know, they're laughing about something, but we don't know what they're laughing about. It'd be so interesting to know what they're laughing about. Yeah. But like when Joe is talking with Oliver, you, you're you getting the feeling like, oh, is he going to break up with Shane? You know, they make some comments that aren't super clear. Like they're very vague comments. But you it could lead you to believe like, oh, Shane and Oliver are going to break up. And but like if you're a, if you're a true possible, you're like, yeah, no, nope, that's not happening. No. But it'd be really interesting for someone who's like never seen it. Like, oh, are they going to break up? You know? Yeah. The first time I watched this, I will admit for a split second, I thought that's what was going to happen. But then I was like, "Eh, no, that's never going to happen. It doesn't seem right. You know? Yeah. The first part of the conversation with Oliver and Joe, Oliver says, dad, have you ever thought about somebody one way for a long time? And then one day they say something or do something and you just can't get it out of your head. He is totally referring to the wedding. Dress. Yes, he is 100% referring to the wedding dress that Shane was wearing in yes. the, the DLO, which has been in his mind. You think about it. Okay, 
that whole episode that's what he was thinking about uh-huh. it wasn't really anything else except oh yeah Shane was in a wedding dress how does yeah. that make me feel you know what I mean yes I know so, what you mean yeah it's really cool <laughs> yeah I also wanted to mention there are a lot of great posts from Shondell on the Alameda and Downey blog for this movie but one in particular that stands out is one about Joe and I believe it's titled The Evolution of Expediting. And it pretty much talks about how Papa O'Toole's ability to deliver Oliver to his intended destination evolved through to the altar. Yeah, I think just the relationship between Joe and Oliver has changed so much Mm -hmm. since Lost Without You. Yeah. Which is, I think, our introductory. I'm not sure. I don't think that's the introductory movie with truth be told is my truth be told was the introductory oh, okay. but uh lost without you was definitely one of the most pivotal movies for their relationship yeah um and like how much joe has just become such a big part of oliver's life now mm-hmm. i think that's really really sweet to see yes. father and son finally together finally talking about things finally bonding over things it's really it's really sweet yeah i agree in my opinion I think that is the best father-son duo on TV. I think I can not, I don't know. I don't really watch any other TV shows, but I, I probably would agree. Like they have a really good father-son relationship yeah. and which once was broken, but now it's really like strong, <laughs> mended and yeah, everything's good. <laughs> yeah. One of my other favorite scenes in this movie is the... First, I love you when they are in the Brown Palace and Shane gets a phone call and it's for Rita and Norman and she gives the phone to Norman and I believe Oliver says something along the lines of, I believe the timing worked out and then Shane agrees. Oliver goes on to say, we make a good team. Shane says, I love us. And Oliver says, and I love, and I love you. And Shane says, oh, you do, huh? Oliver says, and I'm still contemplating what to do about that. Shane says, I see. Does it help if I mention that I love you so? And then they're cut off by those darn skunks. I think that's the first time we've heard them say, I love you. I'm pretty sure. Yes, it is. So you already know where it's going then. Like after that, when he says, I love you, it's like, of course, Shane and Oliver can't break up now after they said, no, I love you to each other. Like, no, that's not happening. Not No. no way. No, way. no, not at all. We get to the wedding. Joe brings Oliver his coat. Joe says, you might want to check the pockets just in case. Did you immediately know that the green tie and a ring was in the- I think once Oliver dug around and they like, he felt it and then he looked up. I think that's when I come like, oh, oh, you know, that's, that's, that's gotta be the green tie because, because Norman had this look of like confusion on his face. No. That was so funny. Like, what does he have in his pocket? But, you know. Yeah. So. And it, and the, what I found really interesting is Oliver was already wearing a bow tie at that point. So, like, your yeah. brain wasn't thinking. And then all of a sudden, I mean, we get to the point where Shane walks down the aisle. Yes. And then she stops. She sees and she cry. sees Norman first. And then it pans over to Oliver. And she's like, she's, like, looking at Oliver. And then all of a sudden, like, she realizes the green tie is there. And her face is like what you know kind of a thing like she can't say anything but it was it was so funny and there Oliver was just smiling and like he gives like that knowing smile like yeah yeah it is that you know I thought it was really cute I squeal every time I watch this part it's it's such a cool scene and like of course they already set it up for you to know so we all get like the behind the scenes kind of glance of like oh he's gonna propose to her because she's wearing the green tie that's ugly Yes. I, I thought that. that Kristen did a great job in that scene, controlling her excitement because of it right. being Rita and Norman's wedding. Right. And I think that's really important too. Like it's not to draw attention away from Norman and Rita's wedding. It, yeah. Like the proposal happens after. Mm-hmm. So they can all celebrate together. Yeah. But I think that was really sweet. Yeah. I love Oliver's part of the speech for the wedding. When he says, love is the ship we build with compassion, forgiveness, and faith. 
to travel the river together, it is the dance of life. It is the greatest of contracts. It is the sweetest of promises to keep each other afloat amid the storms, to keep each other laughing amid the sorrow and faithful amid the darkness, to rejoice together in the morning and to honor each other in the evening. It is a gift from God, the source of this love and of the river itself, the one who will carry and guide us from this shore to the next. And if, I don't know, if the, like this is like little trivia kind of thing, is the song that plays in the background is actually called The River is Wide. Oh, which wow. is also played in um the water is wide yeah the water like it's like it's more of a, like a celtic thing like the water is wide yeah it's really interesting that he's like saying stuff but like actually you're like thinking and there's the song like that's playing in the background that's talking about like a river and the water being wide and like yeah. you're passing through and yeah i think that's really cool and also his speech where he says like marriage is the greatest contract it's also at the beginning of the episode where he was saying yeah. a stamp is the smallest contract but yeah. marriage is the greatest contract I thought that was such a cool like parallel where he talks about contracts again yeah I thought that was I love really that cool. too yeah I love that Shane and Oliver walk down the aisle I love her line when she looks at him and she says are you wearing what I think you're wearing and Oliver just doesn't say a word he doesn't want to take away from when he's about to propose like he doesn't want to take yeah. away from that so he's not going to say nothing he's just gonna he's just gonna walk down the aisle he's yeah just, he's got I that knowing just... glance though but you like yeah it is but he's not gonna t- come out and tell you right now he's gonna yeah. like, wait until that moment yeah I thought it was really cute though. the proposal one of the sweetest moments in the entire canon in my oh opinion. my gosh I remember when I first saw it I was not screaming but I was like squealing so much I was like yes finally we finally get what we wanted you know we're finally getting a proposal scene which is I I mean proposal scenes are always beautiful lovely but this one was just so special because we anticipated it so much from the beginning of the series just even like yeah "Yeah, we know where this is going to end up when it finally happened yeah a really sweet proposal too yes don't look at my tie look at my eyes and listen to my heart I thought it was really sweet how you could already see the tears forming in Shane's eyes and her voice breaks like her voice cracks right and I think it's really cool because those are the exact same words sent said by Randall Ochoa to Letitia is don't look at my tie look into my eyes like ignore that I'm wearing this ugly tie that's green yeah. But like, look at me, look at what I'm saying oh, again, listen to my heart kind of a thing where it's, yeah. it just ignored like the, the weird tie, but the yeah. tie is so important too, Yes, but it's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Marry me and I will love you forever. And I promise I'll never wear this tie again. It's pretty awful. My father picked it out. I probably would have gone with something a little more. Yes, Oliver. Yes. I will marry you and love you forever. The line about his grandmother's ring oh my goodness sweetest line or one of the sweetest lines in the entire series it's like she was like a very special woman to Oliver and wasn't it Oliver who went to his grandmother's house where he decorated the tree I think so in the Christmas one I believe so so like his grandmother always has had a special part of his life and especially when he had a turbulent relationship with his parents especially his mother grandmother was especially a very important motherly figure in his life so of course when he says to Shane like oh there's another great woman except for until I met you kind of a thing yeah I think that was really beautiful and sweet yeah he says this was my grandmother's she was the finest woman I ever knew until you they're just so sweet it was the cutest proposal ever like you already know it's coming because of the green tie, but you also yeah. just want to listen to all the words he's going to say because it's so important. And then the ring and yeah. it's so pretty and beautiful. Like yeah. even the ring, like, oh my goodness. Yes, it's really beautiful. I just think that that line really shows how much Oliver loves Shane and treasures her. Yeah, especially that. Yep. Yes. The next line from Shane, she says, is this what all that contemplating was about? And Oliver nods and, you know, they 
pause for a moment and Oliver says, what is it that you're contemplating? And she picks up the tie and she looks at it for a second and then she pulls him in with the tie and they have that beautiful proposal kiss. Oh my gosh, that kiss, like where he pulls a tie, like it's it's so cliche, like it's happened in other movies, but it was so cute in yes. this one with like just the proposal and everything. Like, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's the tie that let her know that like, oh, he's going to propose. Yeah, Like it wasn't like a complete surprise. It was a surprise when she, she saw that he was wearing the tie, but not a surprise, surprise, like, oh, why, you know, he just proposed out of nowhere. But this was like, oh, the green tie lets you know enough in advance, but like, oh, yeah. he's going to propose, you know? Yeah. And of course the way they lean their foreheads together was really sweet too. Yeah. That was really sweet. So heart melting. Oh, yes. The wedding reception. And I love the first thing we see when Rita runs up to Shane and she says, let me see it again. I thought that was so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That was really sweet. And then Norman walks over or Oliver walks over to Norman. Yeah. And they start talking about like, oh, we're getting all married to each other. Married festivals. Yeah. Festivals. That was so funny. I love Oliver's toast at the end of the movie. He says, when we began together as colleagues charged with delivering so many lost things, I believe that to everything there is a season and to every lost letter, there is a divine purpose. Only today seeing you, Norman, and you, Rita, so happy and you, my Shane, my love, promising to love me forever. Only now do I realize just how very lost I was too, and that your friendship and your faith have delivered me as well. So through rain and snow and dark of night, here we are together. And I love us to the postables. I just, I love the postables. They're so, they're all so great together. Yeah. But during that speech, it's almost like summing up just the journey that all the postables have had throughout Mm -hmm. all of them. I mean, of course there's another movie. Yeah. I think at that time they didn't. No, they didn't know. And they obviously don't know from movie to movie, like if they're going to have another one, which again, it goes with my thing of like every movie has like the perfect ending where it's like, you know what they could, if, if they never make another one, it's at a good place where you'd be like content enough that, you know, it was, at least it was a good ending. Yeah. But they always leave it open-ended enough that they can always make another. And I think that's. That's just good story writing in general. Is, that's good. Yeah. That's just good story writing, good acting, good everything. Yeah, I agree. I love how Martha does that. And how they just kind of like tie everything up with a bow, but leave it just loose open enough that in. you can open it back up again without making it feel strained or stressed or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love the last little part of that scene when they're all dancing that's really cute oh yeah and like how big a part of dancing is in science of the liver too I think that was like just a really sweet yeah scene. I also love the song that was playing in the background by Keb Mo mm-hmm. make someone happy I think is the title of the song it's really sweet yeah I think it's such a like a pretty song too yeah do we want to get into Rita and Norman and Bill an artist yes let's do it yes I love the first scene with Rita and Shane when Shane walks in the DLO and Shane gives Rita her last week of being single gift. They start talking about the girls night out and And they mentioned Montaldos. Yes. Call back. Yes. I was like, yes, they're finally mentioning Montaldos again. Like it'd be so weird if they just left it there and like, oh, we're not talking about Montaldos again. But of course, Montaldos is like the greatest restaurant. So you have to go back there. Yes. Yeah, I would love to see Shane and Oliver go back to Montaldo's in a future movie, maybe for an anniversary. Right. And Nikki is their server. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't it be so funny as like the first time they went there, it was so chaotic. But like, can't we just like have like a a normal, like really pretty romantic meeting at Montaldo's that isn't like canceled or ruined yeah. or like a do-over, you know? Yeah, and that would be something if Nikki was their server. Oh my goodness. They said they're there for their first anniversary. That'd be so cute. Oh my goodness. And one in a million, you know, she's like, are you here for your anniversary? (laughs) No, no. Uh, That's where everything went down. (laughs) Everything bad. Um, Oh goodness. 
I love Rita's line. She says, oh, that's nice. Can Norman and Oliver come too? Oliver Again, says, she doesn't understand the concept of a bachelorette party. She's like, oh, Norman and Oliver can come. with," And of course she would say that because they're all best friends together. Yeah. Yeah, they do everything in life together. Why would this be any different? Yeah, I love how Oliver walks up and he says, "Can Norman and I come where?" <laughs> like, can, okay, imagine this: Norman and Oliver with Shane and Rita going to a spa. To oh gosh, they're like manicure, pet- pedicure. I'm sure Norman would enjoy it, but Oliver, that'd be just so out of Oliver's element. Oh, goodness. The postables and the DLO. So this is in the same scene, but Jane and Oliver and Norman are talking about the employee parking meeting. Norman saying, we're not going back to head in only, are we? Oliver's like, not if I can help it. Shane's like, I'm a diagonal girl myself. Oliver says, I did not know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rita gets off the phone and joins the conversation the florist for their wedding quit because she eloped with the groom from last week's wedding yeah I, would not one of my happy. notes when I was when we were watching this is uh chaos in the DLO that was that was the words I wrote just chaos just yeah everything that's going wrong is going wrong, going wrong. yeah which honestly would it be a Norman and Rita thing if it wasn't I don't know. It's pretty funny though that the yeah. forest just went and eloped with the groom. Yeah. For last week's wedding. I can't imagine the bride would be too happy about that. Oh, of course not. And like, there goes the florist business forever. Like, she can't ever come back as a florist. Like, think about it. Oh, I know. Yeah. That's bad reputation. Yes. Oliver's line when he says, Norman, surely you have a cousin. Rita says, think, think. Think, Norman, six foster families, one forever home, 37 cousins. Yes, cousin Arthur, Oliver says. Cousin Arthur, the convicted cow tipper. Norman says, that was overturned. The conviction, not the cow. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's such a witty one-liner. Oh my goodness. Rita and Norman at the flower shop. Penelope's Petals and Poppies. Poppies were Sonny's favorite perennial or flower. Mm -hmm. Sunny, Rita's mother, passed away spelunking. She loved caves and exploring underground caverns with her greatest passion. That's really sad. Yeah, I think it was kind of, I'm not sure why, I don't know if the actor died or if. No, she's still alive. They must have not been able to get her back. So this was just a really interesting way to um, write her out of the story. Yeah, it was really sad. I thought Norman's line was really sweet when he says, I'm proud of you. It's not easy planning a wedding without your mom. Yeah, that's really sad. It'd be hard. Yeah. And then Rita says, well, she'll be there in spirit. And then they start talking about how her dad will be there and Joe and Oliver and Shane. And Norman says, and grandma. And Rita says, yeah, she's always so hard to keep up with. And then Norman says, she wouldn't miss this for the world. Yeah. And the thing is, Rita already knows that artists' letters haven't been delivered. They've been yeah. returned to sender because that, that's at the beginning of the episode where she's like yeah. looking through. Mm-hmm. But Norman doesn't find out until later. <laughs> yeah. Oliver invites Norman to his house for the bachelor party, but he doesn't say it's a bachelor party. He just says it's a pre-wedding dinner. Shane asks Rita if artists is coming to the wedding, but Rita doesn't know because of all the invitations, which we just mentioned. She can't find her and she doesn't know how to tell Norman. They've sent invitations to every place she's ever been, but they all get returned. Hmm. Shane's line, wasn't she in Machu Picchu? Rita, she was. Then she went down the Amazon, across the Sahara Desert, up Kilimanjaro, and then I lost track. (laughs) And that just shows the adventurous spirit that Norman's grandmother is. (laughs) Artist is the honorary queen of the Rainbow Tribe of the Sacred Biami, which is in Archipelago, 800 miles south of New Guinea. Out in the middle of nowhere. Yes. This next line always makes me crack up. 
Shane says, does the Rainbow Tribe have internet? And Rita says, oh, I don't think so. I think that's why they're so happy. <laughs> Which is so true. You think about real life. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people would be happier without, like, I feel like at first you'd be like sad, like, oh, there's no more internet. But at the same time, you could connect with people better, you know? Yeah. Rita talking about her wedding dress. When Rita was growing up, she always dreamed of one day wearing an Evan original. Rita describing her wedding dress, but hilarious. <laughs> her Western style wedding dress. I'm just like, that is not Rita. Why is she going with that? I know. She says it's long, really long, and it's got a lot of bows and some ruffles, and it's a Western theme. I borrowed it from a friend in international shipping. She married a sheep rancher. Oh my gosh. And like, I think maybe she's avoiding going to get a dress because her mother isn't there like that's very like a special moment that you share with your mother and maybe she's like trying to avoid it yeah Rita returns to the DLO and Norman is there she tells Norman that Evelyn is making her wedding dress Norman finds all the undelivered wedding invitations to artists they start talking about artists and she really wanted to tell him about the invitations but wanted to wait and see if one of them caught up with her Mm -hmm. the line from Norman that really melts my heart in the scene he says the only thing that matters is I finally get to marry you on Saturday and that makes this the happiest week of my life and nothing Mm -hmm. nothing can change that that's really sweet I think it's what really matters even though of course Norman misses his grandmother and wishes that she would be there to watch yeah him marry the love of his life Mm -hmm. um I think that's just a really sweet line like you know what you're the only thing that matters, which is really yeah. sweet. Yeah. The minister has the measles. So they run into another little obstacle. Yeah. So many obstacles in this one. And of course, the person who steps in to save the day is Ramon. Because yes. of course, Ramon can officiate a wedding. Because yeah. of course, he can I love do that. everything. Yeah. I love that next scene when they're talking about who can be the minister and you know Serge can't marry them because he's taken a vow of silence called back to from the heart yes yes his cousin Larry can't because he converted to something that has to do with some yeti (laughs) we just suggest Ramon I love Norman's line he's like Ramon what could possibly qualify an ex-matador tv weatherman ballroom dance teacher to perform our wedding ceremony it's bad enough he's catering it doesn't he have one of those online minister licenses i think i saw one on his wall yeah probably right next to his medical degree from south central (laughs) delaware community college i i think norman still has a grudge against ramon even though they're like they're better now they still have he still kind of like butts heads with him just a little ever since from paris with love ever since that movie he's just kind of like had this thing against ramon for some reason and it's hilarious that it like it still carries over like it's bad enough that he's catering our wedding oh my goodness the next scene when the postables are all at the kelser farm norman is talking to oliver about ramon and asking his opinion on that norman says ramon or no ramon oliver yes and Norman says, yes, Ramon, or yes, no, Ramon. <laughs> Oliver says, I'm sorry. <laughs> Norman says, are you okay, Oliver? Oliver says, I was just contemplating the preponderance of archaic and mystifying wedding superstitions. Why something old or why something new or borrowed or blue? And then there's the tossing of the bouquet, nothing more than a barbaric exercise in female wrestling. <laughs> Norman says, is this a part of the best man's pep talk? Oliver says I have a lot on my mind Norman says me too oh my gosh and like you do think about it like why do they do that why do they have all these traditions I mean they're fun traditions they're fun things but he's so off Oliver's just so off in his own thoughts that he's just he's pondering everything he's pondering the meaning of life at this point yeah oh my goodness also in a way I think Oliver mentioning some of the wedding traditions in this scene is a call forward maybe to the DLO scene and vows when they're about to give each other the gifts. Shane says you're seeing the bride on her wedding day because that's another 
right right and there's so many like you there's just so many and they're like they're not really written down as much as they are passed on from generation to generation kind of a thing which is really cool yeah but of course Oliver being the man he is he's pondering him like why what how (laughs) yeah the postables at the farm with Bill so this is the next scene Bill gave Rita and Norman a canoe that he made himself as a wedding gift we see a loom which was given to Sonny from Bill for their wedding Mm -hmm. Bill thought that Rita and Norman could hitch the canoe to their RV and take it to Grand Lakes for their honeymoon Norman says it's just so and then Oliver coming in with the save we bought sushi and Shane says yes dinner I'm starving Yes, because Norman is, I don't know if he's like having a little bit of cold feet a little bit, if that's part of it, but like he's got all the things, he's he's just way too stressed at this point. He was about to make a comment that would have not sat well (laughs) at all. Good thing for Oliver saving and then Shane coming in. Yeah, Norman never learned how to swim. Oliver says, you'll have plenty of time on your honeymoon to get your feet wet. Norman says, I already have a lot to learn on my honeymoon. That's so funny. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Reading Shane's conversation with Bill, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but Bill was saying how he remembers what Sonny wore for their wedding. Mm -hmm. She did the alterations herself for the dress and it ended up being no bigger than a postage stamp and the veil was longer than the dress. And this will come back up. Yes. It did come back up with the scene with Bill and Rita. And it also plays forward eventually here when we talk about Rita's dress. Yes. I thought it was a beautiful dress. Yeah, I agree. The last line in that scene when Norman says, leave the canoe, take the sushi. (laughs) Oh, Norman. (laughs) This next scene is one of my favorite Norman and Oliver scenes in the canon. When they're at the tux fitting and they're talking about going to the movies Rita and Norman were waiting for the right person to see the movie with. Mm -hmm. I love Oliver's line. He says, you and Rita are the movie. You're the stars of your own love story. And when the time comes, you will know your lines and it will be beautiful. I thought Martha did a phenomenal job with the way this. Right. And and to write it, to let the adults in the room know what they're talking about. Because I mean, it's hallmarks. They obviously have to keep things PG. Mm -hmm. We can't just talk about certain things, but they are talking about certain things without actually saying it, saying it, which honestly is really, really cool how they did that. Mm -hmm. And also I find that like the way they're talking about is like very biblical in kind of a way, like, especially as like the whole element of faith in there too, is Mm -hmm. like, you know, that's, that's more of like a traditional view on Mm -hmm. that than modern day. Martha did that brilliantly and yeah. Eric, Eric and Jeff nailed that scene. Yeah. It was the line delivery on all of it was really mm-hmm. well done too. Yeah. yeah. Bill and Joe have a conversation at the farm and they're talking about artists. And then I think Bill mentions something about Sonny mm-hmm. and the loom. And Joe says, we're going to miss her on Saturday. Bill goes on to say that Sonny was weaving something on the loom before she passed away. Joe says, if that's the only thing that she left undone, my friend, then you're right. You were blessed. And Shane stops by and asks them to build one more wedding gift for Rita and Norman. Yeah. Rita and Norman in the DLO talking about plans for the day and going to couples counseling. (laughs) With Ramon. (laughs) Can you imagine couple counseling with Ramon? (laughs) I'm sorry. Ramon would go off on a side tangent. We would not stick to just couples counseling. We would start talking about other things outside of couples counseling. Oh, and again, Norman was like uh, couples counseling. Like, you know, when yeah. they have to leave to go, it's like, he doesn't really want to go because again, Ramon. Um, yeah. I love when Oliver comes in and Rita and Norman are leaving and Rita says, hi, Oliver. Bye, Oliver. Norman right. says, couples counseling. Don't ask. <laughs> yeah yeah Rita and Shane's conversation at the salon I thought this was a really sweet scene with them Shane is asking about how couples counseling with Ramon went Rita's talking about it and she mentions something that Ramon had said about the guest list 
Mm-hmm. She says, when you invite God to the wedding, he stays for the marriage and a cord of three strands can never be broken. And then Shane says, you and Norman are strands. Rita says, that's a metaphor. And then Shane says something else. And then Rita says, you see what I mean? Very spiritual. And also the cord of three strands was also in one heart. of the episodes in the series. The one where they find that letter with Ellie she wrote a letter to herself. Oh, yes. To future me. Yes. It, that was also mentioned in that episode. So I yeah. find it was like, it's mentioned again, which is really yeah. cool. I love that. The bachelor party, Norman and Oliver's arrival and seeing artists on the computer. Oh my gosh. When artist is on the video call on the computer and the computer is rising. Well, up it's right on the cake and you don't know what's happening. And both Norman and Oliver have this like like their uncomfortable look on their face like what is going on what is this and then it turns out to be artists and he's like oh grandma yeah Oliver's like what the Sam Hill (laughs) yeah because he was not expecting that at all because he planned this well he planned this with his dad um but he had no idea obviously artist is on she says it's me I mean it is I it's your grandmother (laughs) it's so cute Yes. Norman talking to artists and introducing her to everyone. Artist is in Patagonia. She's detoxifying. Yes. Rita introducing artists to her dad. It was really brief, but I thought that was a cute moment. Right. Ramon teaching Norman how to dance. Now we get two clips, but they're not one right after the other. No. The last one is really funny when Norman asks Ramon, how many weddings have you officiated? Ramon says, none. You were my first and dip. Uh, Yeah, I wouldn't expect Ramon to have done one before, but you know, it's funny. It's Mm. perfect comedic timing. Yes, that must have been a fun scene to shoot. I can imagine everyone was just cracking up. Right, because like, it's so funny because Ramon's teaching Norman to dance and then all of a sudden, and dip. (laughs) Bill's conversation with artists. Artist is a part of the same tribe that Sonny was. Which is really cool because then yeah. it's like another connection between Norman's family and Rita's family, like coming together again. Yeah. They learned to weave together 25 years ago. They were loom buddies. <laughs> Bill asks the artist about Skyping the next day and showing her his dairy farm. <laughs> Artist's comment when she says, back in the 13th century, I was a cow. <laughs> It's so funny. Oh my gosh. Carol Burnett is perfect at the comedy. Perfect. Absolutely. She is awesome. Artist's conversation with Rita, Norman, Shane, Oliver, Joe, and Bill. So we already talked a little bit about this earlier with the letter story, but Mm -hmm. Artist is giving Rita and Norman the email address of her accountant, Harry, who is sending a check to the O'Toole Foundation to establish the Hayworth Dorman Scholarship for Students of Postal history which is so cool because like that is so Rita and Norman like postal history because Rita's photographic memory and she remembers everything yeah and Norman just loves the post office and he has all this knowledge about it it's like the perfect postable present for yeah. life yeah and I feel like the postal history comment is possibly a little callback to lost without you when the guy that was the director of the USPS commercial offered him the job for postal history. Yeah. Yeah. Offered Norman the job. Yeah. Yep. Bill and artist's conversation at the farm. Artist is helping Bill with the Biami wedding blanket for Rita and Norman, which is a traditional gift from mother to daughter on the day of her wedding. Bill has to use an alpaca for the rest of the blanket because <laughs> I think he ran out of whatever he needed yeah which is so funny too like alpaca will do and then they show the alpaca yeah (laughs) even the hey yes artist drinking the yak milk I love that part she's like "Ah!" yeah I remember laughing just so much at that scene it's one of the best ones like yes oh my goodness the last scene we see of Bill and artist at the farm is when Bill finishes the blanket, of course, with her help, and Artis's video freezes. It's like, what was she going to say? You know, like, she doesn't complete the sentence, and it just freezes. 
gosh. The wedding. I love Hazel's rundown on Gabe and Hattie's story. I thought it was so funny, like, to reference another science field delivered movie inside a science field delivered movie was hilarious. Yes. Oh, Jill delivers that line perfectly. Right. She does such a great job as Hazel. Yes. We love Hazel. Yes. Gabe is singing at the wedding. I'm so glad that Kebna was a part of this movie. Yeah, and he had two songs in this movie mm-hmm. where he yeah. was playing the guitar and singing. And it's, yeah. it's really, really cool to have a returning postal story. Yes. Oliver and Norman's conversation. I thought this was a really nice moment between them. Right. Rita and Bill's father-daughter first look which was really sweet. That That was the sweetest. And I remember when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, her dress is like her mother's where it was like the size of like a poster stamp. It just means that it's like a shorter wedding dress with a really long veil. And the veil is so pretty. And it is, yeah. And like, especially made for Rita by Evelyn Rose, which makes it even more special. Yeah. Yeah. You got to know that there's a prayer sewn into that dress somewhere too, which is really special. And yeah. Both Crystal and Kristen looked beautiful and I love attire. I think the costuming for every sign sealed delivered movie, like whatever whoever puts their outfits together does a fantastic job every single time. I don't think I've ever seen an outfit where it's like, oh, that doesn't belong in this. No, it's yeah. perfect. Valerie Halverson is there. Yeah, work, she does an designer. amazing job on yeah. every single movie. Yeah. yeah. The Beyond Me wedding blanket was placed on the altar, which I thought was a really nice touch. Yeah, I think it was re- it was really special. Like it gets carried down the aisle too by both um, Ramon, and- Ramon and Joe, I oh, think. Yeah, they carry it and then they set up the altar and they like have the candles where like one yeah. person lights. They, they like both of them light the main candle together yeah. with each other separate mm-hmm. candles. It was really cool. Yeah. I love Rita and Shane's short conversation before Rita walks down the aisle. That was really sweet too. Mm-hmm. Norman seeing Rita walking down the aisle. That was really sweet. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. I always love seeing the bride and groom first looks for wedding. It's always so sweet and like it's it's special. It's not like you haven't seen these people before, but it's like it's the last moment before you're together forever. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. a really special moment. Yeah. Ramon officiating the ceremony. I love this part of the speech as well from Ramon when he says, no matter where we find ourselves, when two or more are gathered together in the name of all that is sacred and holy, there is love. And love is a profound mystery that two souls can reach across the great river that separates one solitary heart from another and set out on a dangerous and thrilling journey where in an instant, in a miracle, two become one. And then it cuts to Oliver's part of the speech. I think that was really cool too, like like Ramon's little speech. And then it cuts like almost seamlessly into Oliver. It does, yeah. And it's really cool. And of course they like, they have a montage of Rita and Norman of like old moments. And I thought that was really cute too. Yes. And really sweet. Yeah, I didn't mention it when we talked about Shane and Oliver, but I loved their montage as well. Yes, I think montages, they, they just like bring everything together. Oh, like, oh yeah, remember that moment? You know, it's really special yeah. for the viewers to see like a montage. And like, I think sometimes that can go on in your own head, like in real life, like, oh yeah, remember all this stuff? Yeah. Yes. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. Of course, the first kiss and seeing the owl, which- Yes. I love that they had an owl in there, which is again, call back, call back to another episode where she's like, oh, look, there's an owl. And yeah, like, the Christmas movie. I, I think it's really cool that they always have like parts that like make you think of another one. Yeah, I, I agree. That's really cool. And of course for Rita, like you gotta have an owl. It's special. Yes. I think that wraps up our segment on Rita and Norman. Do we want to discuss the lessons we learned from this movie? Let's do it. The first one I have written down is the stamp is the smallest contract in the world. A promise if you believe in it, somehow, some way we will deliver it because if this contract is broken, hearts can be broken too. So in my opinion, I think that that's saying, you know, keep your promises. Right. I think that's really important too. There's, there was a lot in this, but like 
I think the one that just stuck out the most to me was we are all a little like a little like lost letters and we need to be delivered I think that's just so yeah. important because I feel like the mother in Elise she needed to be delivered to the point where she can see her daughter again yeah um, her daughter needed to come to kind of like an understanding of like what her mother has been through mm-hmm. uh, Oliver had to get to the point where he could propose to Shane and Rita and Norman have finally like got delivered to the point where they're getting married so there's a lot of like things that are happening all at once and it's all about like going from loss to be kind of being like found and you know being delivered at the right moment and you know yeah I also think that lesson is a call forward to the opening monologue from Vals which we mentioned at the beginning of this sometimes you need to alter life a little to make it fit better yeah that was a really cute line I thought that was really sweet yeah that that was said in the letter to her daughter like yeah love is the ship we build with compassion forgiveness and faith to travel the river together it is the dance of life which we mentioned earlier yes I didn't mention it when we were talking about Shane and Oliver and I don't know if you have seen it yet but there is an international scene from Alameda and Downing of Joe and Shane and Oliver right after the wedding and Oliver is giving Joe the green tie back it's just I haven't seen that I need to go watch that I need to go watch that we will link that in the description of this video love is weathering the storms of life together which is really good advice yeah I it's not always going to be ups it's not always going to be downs know that there's a mixture and you weather it together yeah, to every letter, there is a divine purpose. And that is my last one on the list. I mean, that's the whole summary of Science Sealed Delivered, though, yeah. is every letter is has a divine purpose and it's always going to be delivered at the right time. Yeah. Even though it may not seem like the right time because the dress didn't arrive in time for the wedding, but that wasn't the most important part of the story. Yeah, I agree. We have some trivia for the postables. To wrap up this episode, Lydia, do you want to go first? Yeah. So my first one is how many yoo-hoos does Oliver drink during signs still delivered to the altar? Oh gosh, I wasn't paying attention to this. So I'm just going to guess a number. Um, I'm going to say three. He only drinks one in this movie, which I was surprised. Oh. I, I had a, like a tally going. I'm like, okay, he's got to drink more than one. It only became oh, one. So and he has that in the dead letter office when he's talking to Norman about, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. At the beginning when they're talking about the box. Yeah. That's the only time he has a yoo-hoo. Every single, because like he has tea later and then he's not really drinking. But he's drinking something during the party, but it's not specified what he's drinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Only one yoo-hoo. And then champagne at the end. So. Yes. Name one other movie in the SSD canon that we hear the song It's All Good from the opening scene. A, The Vows We Have Made. B, From Paris With Love. C, The Impossible Dream. Or D, From the Heart. If it'll help, the song was in the opening sequence of this movie as well. It was in the closing sequence of, oh gosh, I don't remember names of movies. One in a million? <laughs> uh, the one yeah from the heart I think was that one a million yeah Yeah. it was one of those ones I remember it's had something to do with the Montaldos people again yep one in a million and Shane and Oliver are dancing and I remember the end scene of that movie where they're dancing to it's so cute yeah yeah that's not the that's not the one though gosh um I feel like it's from Paris with love no no (sighs) wow I don't I must not pay enough attention you want me to tell you? Yeah, go ahead. The vows we have made. It's in the opening scene when Shane and Oliver are walking to work arm in arm. I do not remember that. And I remember a lot from that movie because I've seen it multiple times. Oh. But like somehow that just doesn't click in my head. Like, oh yeah. That's all right. My next question is, how many years has Mr. Fry been a tea master at the Brown Palace Hotel? 37. Yes, 37 Yay. years. How many Nellie Bly stamps were on the box? Three. Ding, 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 ding. That one, 
I think that's really cool. Like that was the one she had the most of was Nellie Bly, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. All right. When did the archives at the Brown Palace Hotel start? I'm going to make this multiple choice because it might be a little hard. Okay. We're going to do A, 1891, B, 1901, C, 1910, or D, 1908. I think it's B, 1901. Correct. Ding, Yay! Ding, ding. <laughs> How many Denver restaurants have Sunday afternoon tea? A, 25, B, 15, C, 12, or D, 18? I think it was 12. No? 18? Ding, 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 ding. I knew it wasn't 15. That's yeah. what I knew. I knew it wasn't 25. I knew it wasn't. Yeah, process of elimination. Right, exactly. I got to think about it like, hmm. <laughs> Which is actually quite a bit if you think about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that is a lot. From the start of the episode to the end, how many days pass? I'll give you multiple choice. Four, five, six, or seven? Six, because it starts on a Monday and ends on a Saturday. Ding, 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 correct. Yay. How long did Annalise tell Shane and Rita she'd work at the Brown Palace? A, seven years, B, five years, C, eight years, or D, nine years? I think it was eight. No, no. I'm trying to think of when the program goes down because that that has something was it five yes ding 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 good job yay all right principals i think that wraps up our recap of to the altar i can't believe we've already gone through the whole sign seal delivered canon hopefully there will be many more in the future yes let's hope for more yes we need more of this amazing cast together Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed. And thank you, Lydia, for coming on. This was a lot of fun. Well, thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun for me, too. Sign to Deliver is such a amazing series. And I thank you just for having me to talk about it. Of course. We'll definitely have to have you back on sometime. We hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world. And we will see you in a few weeks for a very special SSD wrap-up episode. We love y'all and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.